Hey guys, welcome back for the Maniac Guy up here from Maine. So it's a nice fall day. We're going to be going over a little bit about the loading procedures and operation of this. Uh, this is Traditions uh, Trapper. It's kind of like, uh, I guess, it's a Hawken style pistol. This is a 50 caliber muzzle loading pistol. And uh, so that's what this guy here is. This one here is made in Spain. Pretty common. Get them in Cabela's just about everywhere. So uh, what I'm going to do is, and I've had this for a number of years, I'm going to just systematically kind of take you through the things that you're going to need and then how to load it. So figure we'd just do a really quick video. So we've got, you know, you want to have a good range bag. Uh, a friend of mine actually made me this bag uh, from uh, Rustic Renderings, this company he's got. So shout out to him. Uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, if he's still got his website up and going. And uh, so you want a good range bag or slash hiking bag if you're going to be hiking because, you know, you've got basically, and I've got my powder horn here, you'll be looping this over your shoulder so you're hiking because you don't just have self-made bullets. You know, you've got to load this stuff. So, um, so good range bag, uh, anything will do really. The important part is that it's got a couple pouches inside to help you kind of organize your stuff. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy. Um, Usually in that bag, I've got a kit, which I don't have out with me today because I'm out behind the house. Uh, but usually you'll have things like a nipple pick and things like that in case you get an obstruction in the nipple of your firearm. Um, powder horn. I've actually got my powder in this horn. Uh, she's pretty full right now. Uh, this unscrews, by the way, for all those of you who don't know. And basically it's just screws out, screws in. And what this does is these all have different what's called throws of uh, powder. So... Basically, what I'm putting for powder in this, by the way, you can either use the traditions, uh, you can either use the, I use Pyrodex, and you can either use triple F or or double uh, F uh, equivalent powder. Um, so they have a P rated that's green for pistols. This this guy here is a 50 cal, and you're pretty safe using the regular rifle rated, uh, but it's got to be the uh, black powder uh, or Pyrodex for the equivalent. So anyway, um, all you do, and I'll show you guys when you measure it, or when we load it is you just push in on this dump it and that'll be your your equivalent uh grains that you want in there uh usually i, I use right around uh 30 to 40 grains uh, i've got a 30 grain throw in this guy here um i have used a 42 in this but this 30 grain seems to work pretty good i get good accuracy out of that so you got your powder bore butter is always important now these patches are pre pre lubricated with bore butter um this is the pine scent and uh, bore butter is an important part of muzzle loading. It's an all-natural coating for the gun, for the for the barrel. Uh, pretty much, I use it to lubricate the whole gun. You don't want to use modern uh, synthetic oils on these, by the way. Um, black powder hates anything modern. Uh, you, you put normal gun oil, and it'll basically bake it into cement almost. So you've got 50 caliber cut patches, 50 caliber swaged round balls. So these are old school, man. These are lead round balls. Uh, so we're using just straight up lead balls. Um, I may someday cast my own. I don't know. Um, when I'm hiking, I keep those balls in my ball bag just to kind of keep them from rolling around in there. I just got them out on the table for uh, display purposes. Uh, number 10 or number 11 percussion caps. Any brand will do. These are CCI. Sometimes I use Remington's. Uh, this is an inline capper where the caps will stack up in here. So typically if I'm out hunting, you don't want to be fiddling around with that, especially in the winter if I'm out hiking or squirrel hunting with this thing. So this basically just, you pop it on the nipple, slide it off, and it'll load the caps and it kind of keeps the caps contained so you're not got cold fingers messing around with that. Uh, this is a ball starter and this will come in in a minute. I'll show you what that's all about. And usually I'll keep a, a range rod in my bag when I'm out hiking. This is a, a polymer, like a Patriot rod um with a 50 caliber jig head on it so this will double for cleaning or anything like that if i have issues in the field uh, bad bad juju bees when you're out in the woods and all you have is this guy here and uh, i did this with my long rifle once and you snap it in the woods now you're kind of done you come down a little crooked or something this is just a hardwood kind of thing so that's why i carry one of these now because i don't ever want to get caught like that again so all right uh so pretty much that's an overview of the stuff that we've got here now we're going to get into the loading of it and uh the first step of course to the loading is going to be to put a cap on and, and check the function of it and so i'm going to cut to the functions check and we're going to do that now. Alrighty, so we're going to bring it back to full cock there's half cock full cock going to take one of our percussion caps 
put it on the nipple. This is an important part. Whenever you've had the gun in storage for a while, there's nothing in it. I haven't had it loaded. Set that front trigger. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find something. Might be some pebbles. I mean, it's it's fall up here in New England, so there's leaves, blades of grass. And I'm going to dry fire it with this cap, or I'm going to fire it with this cap, and I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting a good flow with the fire that comes through there and make sure it comes out the barrel so I've got no obstructions, rust, anything like that. So, because it's a bummer when you get the powder loaded in and you're not getting good spark ignition back here. Uh, so, we, we're just going to make sure that everything's good to go before we load it. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of displacement there. It means we've got a good clean firearm. So now we're good to go. Alrighty guys, so basically uh, that was how you functions check it. And now to get on to the loading, we're gonna, as I said, this is half cock here. We're gonna actually drop her back and we're gonna put it back on full cock. We're just gonna cock it all the way back. So the very first step to this, you don't ever wanna forget it. I've got it cocked so I get airflow through here. Don't worry, you're not gonna lose any powder through here. It's gonna settle down in this area, which is what you want. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to take and here, I'll show you guys, just do it kind of slow so you can see, we're going to depress the button, we're going to hold our finger over the end of the powder horn, kind of give it a little shake to make sure it's all in there, let go of the button, and if you look, now she's full of black powder. All right, you guys, you got that? All right, cameraman says we got that. So now the very first step, and you really don't want to forget this one, powder goes down. And now we've got our 30 grains of powder in the firearm. Now remember, it's safe to work over the muzzle. You want to make sure you give it time in between shots. So if there's any embers or anything like that, some people clean it in between each shot. But for all intents and purposes right now, we've had no balls through it. So it's, it's perfectly safe. Uh, it can work over the muzzle, no problem, because there's no cap on it. And this isn't actually, well, it's not actually a firearm anyway, but it's uh, not actually going to be a considered shootable. It's a paperweight until we get that cap on it. Now you can just load it with just the patch. These patches have been around for a couple of years. So sometimes with the first shot I'll take, I'll just take a little, little tiny of that boar butter. The gun loves the boar butter. Um, it's like seasoning a fry pan, you know, these, these old style. And that sometimes helps because you can stick it, stick your patch right there. And now it's not blowing off on you, especially on a windy day. Now you just take the 50 caliber round ball and just kind of thumb it in a little bit. This is where the ball starter comes in. So you take this little nub here and give it a good push. Now she started, and now we come up on the top, hold it steady. You basically want to show what you mean business. Now we take our range rod, or if you all you have is the rod that came with it, you put that in. Use the flange end so it cups the ball. Just like that is that's made so it doesn't deform that lead ball in there because you don't want that deformed because it's going to fly all funny now this particular ball starter is flat on this side with a hole in it the reason why that is is because it fits perfectly on my ramrod now i just heard the air you probably didn't hear it but i heard all the air being displaced pushing through there which is exactly what you want and then we're going to give it a couple of good thumps to make sure and that's why it's important to have that cut end on the ball now that's pretty much all there is to it. We've already got it back to full cock. So then this is where that inline capper comes in. If you're using the inline capper, you just slide it right on, but we just slide that. Now this is gonna fire when I when I deploy it. So if I'm out in the woods, it's not advisable to let it ride like that on the cap. Uh, because you know any jolt could fire the weapon. So that's why these have this half cock. Now that half cock, it's not going to fire, didn't actually cock the weapon at all. But that's how you typically would carry it in a holster or something like that, or if you're just hiking, uh, because you don't really want to have it resting right on that. You want to seat it good so that no rain or anything gets in there. Um, so the old adage, keep your powder dry, well, this is where it all came from. So you don't want to, if for all intents and purposes, you've got, you can bring these out if it's raining, it's messy, and sometimes you get some water in there somewhere, it's not going to fire, but for the most part, We've got our uh, bore butter and our lead ball and our patch seated right up against the, the primer. So that, that's repelling the water. So it's keeping that, that powder dry. And from the back end, uh, from the breech end, so to say, we've got this has got a really tight seal around the nipple. So that's keeping your powder dry from the back. So as long as it's dry when you load it and you're careful to seal it, 
you should be good to go. So you can use these out in muzzle loader season or whatever, uh, you know, whether it be a full size or whether it be one of these guys, uh, you can use them uh, in the rain. Uh, I've done it many, many times. So that's pretty much the deal with that. So, uh, hey, it's always nice to have you guys along. That was just a quick tutorial and rundown on the uh, the Hawkins style, or this is the Traditions Trapper 50 caliber muzzle loading pistol. So, hey, you guys take care, and until next time, have a good one. All the time, pictures so perfect we play through, only cause you set up the angle, web that you weave got us tangled, caught in once before.